This video is going to show you how to glue hard bat rubber onto a blade. Uh, the black side you're seeing here, you know, it's kind of lumpy and uneven. That's the old method I used, which is the same method you'd use with regular old rubber cement or, you know, basic chack. And it doesn't work so well with a latex uh, water-based glue that I'm using, Terramender. It, it works as far as function. It, you know, this is a perfectly playable surface, but it just doesn't look very good. So I kind of played around with the glue a little, bit, a little bit more and came up with a method that gives you this nice, smooth surface we see on the red side. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do it so it looks nice and smooth. Now this is Terramender. You can get this two ounce bottle at Ace Hardware for about six bucks, I think it is. Uh, not quite as cheap as old regular old rubber cement, but no, not too expensive. Or you can mail order for $15, a much larger size, half a liter. $15 plus shipping, got that on Amazon. I'm not going to be gluing a fresh sheet. I'm going to be taking this old sheet off that was glued with Terramender to show you that it comes off fairly easily and also to show you how nice and easy this stuff comes off the blade. Uh, once I take it off, the latex is left behind on the blade and you can see I just kind of roll up a ball of it or a, a kind of a roll of it, grab it and pull. And if you just pull straight away, this stuff comes off the blade pretty easily. Cleaning up the glue residue left by Terramender on a blade or a piece of rubber is pretty darned easy. This is what the stuff looks like afterwards. It's just basically a chunk of latex. Throw that away. If you're going to glue a uh, rubber that doesn't have any uh, cloth backing, I suggest you clean it real well with something like isopropyl alcohol to get any kind of mold release or other stuff on there that might prevent the latex from sticking. So this is going to get cleaned a second time. And I just kind of wipe it down real good with rubbing alcohol and after it's wet then wipe it down with the cloth. It might not even be a bad idea to use something like steel wool or a scotch bright pad to roughen up the surface. The latex glue does not adhere strongly to smooth surfaces. That's why for instance you see me doing this all this stuff on a granite countertop. The glue you can spill it all over the place and it cleans up really nice and easy off of anything that's smooth or non-porous. You don't want to do this over cloth. If you spill it on cloth it's not going to come out unless you get water on it right away. Spill it on something smooth and it'll come right up. I use a piece of foam rubber as an applicator. You don't want to use a regular brush as the latex glue coagulates. It will just foul up the fibers and just gunk up the brush. It's not like regular rubber cement. You don't want to use a conventional brush. I've masked the sides and back of the blade in key areas here where I expect to spill some glue over. The main difference between this method that gives us a nice smooth application and the conventional method is that we use a lot of wet glue and it makes a little bit of a mess. In the old method where you simply spread a layer of glue on both the blade and then on the rubber, let it dry a little bit and then you know stick them together, contact cement style. We're going to do something it's a little bit different. We're going to do the blade the same way. Thin layer of glue with them spreading around, you know, nice and smoothly here. And trying to make it pretty even. And we will let that dry a little bit. When we get to the rubber, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to use a little bit more glue than this. And we're not going to give it much opportunity to dry. Basic idea is, by rollering it while it's still nice and wet, we can force a nice, smooth, thin layer of glue between the rubber and the blade. And this gives us our nice, smooth finish. That's the basic idea. So, putting some glue on the rubber. Can't really see the rubber very well. Unfortunately, we've got black rubber on, you know, black granite countertop. But you will be able to see the rubber as I, you know, move this around. And I'm not all that concerned about spilling some of the rubber, or excuse me, some of the uh, latex glue onto the countertop because it'll clean up nice and easily as I'll show you later on. I'm just making sure there's some glue everywhere on the rubber to make sure that the rubber adheres completely and that there's not some spot on the rubber that doesn't have glue and therefore doesn't get stuck down. Okay, so I'll just kind of lift this up out of the way. Yep, you can see I spilled some on the granite there. 
No problem, I'll clean that up in a bit right there. There we go. That was fast. Ma magic of editing. And I'm going to lift up the rubber and kind of turn it upside down. I'm just going to grab it by the sides, letting the middle part droop down. Just let the bowed middle part rest on the blade. Because it's really nice and wet here, this isn't going to adhere right away. And that lets me do a little bit of micro positioning, which is nice to be able to do when you're re-gluing a sheet that's already been cut. You can see I got a little glue on the upper right there on the pips, but that won't be a problem. This green roller is something a friend uh, at the club gave me. It's uh, some part from a copy machine, and I'm using this to roll it on, and it's getting a little bit messy with some of the glue I've picked up because I've been a little bit sloppy in this, so I just kind of roll it. When I move the blade, you'll see that the roller squeezed some glue out the edge there. I roll it again and kind of get rid of some more glue, squeeze some more out. Do it from a couple different angles so it gets nice and smooth. A little messier than I would have liked. Actually, the red, which is the first time I used this method, turned out much neater. Probably because I used about the right amount. I've used a little bit more glue here than I really need. Anyway, you can see how it's kind of spilled out here on the back. No big deal, because I'll just show you. We just take a paper towel and kind of wipe it up. I could wait later, just let it dry right now, and this stuff would dry off, and I could just peel it off, kind of like you saw me peel the rubber off the blade earlier. To make that point further, uh, I'm going to show you that this glue is really, looks like a mess. It's no big deal. Here's, I'm just getting on my finger, and if I roll it around, fingers are smooth. They're not porous like cloth, and the stuff just balls up and crumbles, turns to you know, like rubber. Well, that's what it is. It's rubber. It's latex. And my hand just wipe with paper towel and it's, my hand's clean. No sticky residue. No need to even wash my hands. It just rubs right off. And that's what this stuff does. It'll rub right off anything smooth. And I'll just take a paper towel to the countertop here and it just comes up. You end up with, at worst, you end up with little bits of rubber like you might get from using an eraser. Here you can see that uh, little bit of latex that spilled on the upper right I mentioned earlier. I'm just taking it off with a little toothpick. It's no big deal. It kind of lifts it up and yank it out. And you can see that it comes off the rubber pretty easily. And now I'm peeling off the masking tape from the other side. And of course the masking tape doesn't leave any residue on the rubber. It comes off nice and clean. We get all this stuff off. We have a basically a finished paddle. So here's our finished racket. Move it in the light so you can see the reflections. This kind of exaggerates any unevenness, and you can see this is much better than we had. Not as good as I did with the red side, but pretty good. And frankly, if you're not happy with it, rip it off and do it again. As I showed at the beginning of the video, it's very easy to remove the rubber and the glue. This is looking pretty good to me, and we now have a VOC-free hard bat racket ready to play.